One body, one spirit, one faith, one Lord, one people, one nation, praising the Lord. One body, one spirit, one faith, one Lord, one people, one nation, praising our Lord. We will praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. And I know on this beautiful brand new day, September 16th, that you are watching and praising the Lord, John and Mel, and welcome to the reading of the Word of God, filling up on the power and the presence and the Holy Spirit. Nothing more important, nothing more important than to start your day filling up with high test, high test energy. Yes, go for the right hose of infilling. His name is Holy Spirit. And there comes Miss Kathy and Sharon. Hallelujah. Just just like students marching in to sit down before Jesus. Hallelujah. And I am too. I get as much, maybe more, because I'm here my ears are hearing my voice. Read this. And so we are as faithful as we know how to be. Coming. And here comes Miss Connie with Shalom. Yes, and we have a peace agreement in, that we can shout and praise the Lord about bringing nations together that just couldn't do it on their own. There is an anointing on our dear president, an anointing within the White House. And that's why Satan's having such a kicking, screaming fit, isn't it? And there comes Miss Luann. So we will praise the Lord for this. And we know the only lasting peace will be when the Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, comes, right? There will be agreements, and they will last whatever season, and then they'll be broken. And we know, we know, because we are filling ourselves with the truth. This is the truth. But we can rejoice for the time that peace is made. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We are believing for peace and repentance that there might be a great ingathering, right? Hallelujah. Well, Jane could go off just on a wonderful tangent and take all the time, and I don't intend to do that. So on this September 16th, we will be reading from Isaiah 22 Isaiah 22 and we are going to read again <clears throat> all of the troubles the birth pains the corrections that Israel went through and we can apply them as they seem fit because Holy Ghost will tell us won't he he will witness within us what we really need to take for our lives we need to take it all but particularly there will be words for wherever you are right now so we begin Isaiah 22 with the burden oh dear that's a heavy word the burden against the valley of vision what ails you now that you have all gone up to the housetops you who are full of noise a tumultuous city a joyous city? Your slain men are not slain with the sword, nor dead in battle. All your rulers have fled together. They are captured by the archers. All who are found in you are bound together. They have fled from afar. Good morning, Miss Lou Ann and Yolinda. Therefore, I said... Look away from me. I will weep bitterly. 
Do not labor to comfort me because of the plundering of the daughter of my people, for it is a day of trouble and treading down and perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountain, Elam bore the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen, and Kir uncovered the shield. It shall come to pass that your choicest valleys shall be full of chariots, and the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gates. <clears throat> he removed, now we're going to listen to all the things that the people did, you did. He removed the protection from Judah. And here's why. You looked in that day to the form, to the armor of the house of the forest. You also saw the damage to the city of David, that it was great. And you gathered together the waters of the lower pool. You numbered the houses of Jerusalem and the houses you broke down to fortify the wall. You also made a reservoir between the two walls for the water of the old pool. But, but, screeching halt here, you did not look to its maker, nor did you have respect for him who fashioned it long ago. And in that day, the Lord God of hosts called for weeping and for mourning, for baldness, and for girding with sackcloth. But instead, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating meat and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. I'm sorry, but that statement is very dangerous to possibly be your last one before you face the Lord. And then it was revealed in my hearing by the Lord of hosts, surely for this iniquity there will be no atonement for you. No atonement. Even to your death, says the Lord God of hosts. Thus says the Lord God of hosts, go, proceed to this steward, to Shebna, who is over the house, and say, what have you here? And whom have you here that you have hewn a sepulcher here? As he who hews himself a sepulcher on high, who carves a tomb for himself in the rock. Indeed, the Lord will throw you away violently, O mighty man. Wow. Wow. I wouldn't want those words prophesied over me. Throw me away violently. And will surely seize you. He sh will surely turn violently and toss you like a ball into a large country. And there you shall die. And there your glorious chariots shall be the shame of your master's house. So I will drive you out of your office, and from your position he will pull you down. And then it shall be in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, to clothe him with your robe and strengthen him with your belt. I will t commit your responsibility into his hand. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. The key of the house of David will lay on his shoulder. So he shall open and no one shall shut. And he shall shut and no one shall open. I will fasten him as a peg in a secure place, and he will become a glorious throne to his father's house. They will hang on him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring 
and the posterity, all vessels of small quantity from the cups to all the pitchers. And in that day, says the Lord of hosts, the peg that is fastened in the secure place will be removed and be cut down and fall, and the burden that was on it will be cut off, for the Lord has spoken. Wow. We move along to chapter 23 of Isaiah. The burden against Tyre. Wail, you ships of Tarshish, for it is laid waste, so that there is no house, no harbor. From the land of Cyprus it is revealed to them. Be still, you inhabitants of the coastland, you merchants of Sidon, whom those who cross the sea have filled, and on great waters the grain of Shehor, the harvest of the river is her revenue, and she is a marketplace for the nations. Good morning, Miss Maria. Be ashamed, O Sidon, for the sea has spoken, the strength of the sea, saying, I do not labor, nor bring forth children, neither do I rear young men, nor bring up virgins. When the report reaches Egypt, they also will be in agony at the report of Tyre. Cross over to Tarshish. Wail, you inhabitants of the coastland. This is your joyous city, whose antiquity is from ancient days, whose feet carried her far off to dwell. Who has taken this counsel against Tyre? the crowning city, whose merchants are princes, whose traders are the honorable of the earth. The Lord of hosts has purposed it to bring to dishonor the pride of all glory, to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. Overflow through your land like the river, O daughter of Tarshish, there is no more strength. He stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the nations and the kingdoms. The Lord has given a commandment against Canaan to destroy its strongholds. And he said, you will rejoice no more. O you oppressed virgin daughter of Sidon. Arise, cross over to Cyprus. There also you will have no rest. Behold the land of the Chaldeans, this people which was not. Assyria founded it for wild beasts of the desert. They set up its towers, they raised up its palaces, and brought it to ruin. Wail! you ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. Now it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre will be forgotten 70 years, according to the days of one king. At the end of 70 years, it will happen to Tyre as in the song of the harlot. Take a harp, go about the city, you forgotten harlot, make sweet melody, sing many songs that you may be remembered. And it shall be at the end of 70 years that the Lord will deal with Tyre. She will return to her hire and commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. Her gain and her pay will be set apart for the Lord. It will not be treasured nor laid up, for her gain will be for those who dwell before the Lord, to eat sufficiently and for fine clothing. Take it all in. 
We have yet to have 100% understanding, right? And we move along to chapter 24 of Isaiah. Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste, distorts its surface and scatters abroad its inhabitants, and it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the creditor, so with the debtor. The land shall be entirely emptied and utterly plundered, for the Lord has spoken this word. Woo. The earth mourns and fades away. The earth languishes and fades away. The haughty people of the earth languish. The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore the curse has devoured the earth and those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned. Interesting word, isn't it? Burned. Fire. And few men are left. The new wine fails. The vine languishes. All the merry-hearted sigh. The mirth of the tambourine ceases. The noise of the jubilant ends. The joy of the harp ceases. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up so that none may go in. There is a cry for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened, and mirth of the land is gone. In the city, desolation is left. And the gate is stricken with destruction. When it shall be thus in the midst of the land among the people, it shall be like the shaking of an olive tree, like the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. Therefore, glorify the Lord in the dawning light. Oh, that's what we intend to do here, Lord, is glorify you in the dawning light. The name of the Lord God of Israel in the coastlands of the sea. From the ends of the earth we have heard songs, glory to the righteous. But I said, I am ruined, ruined. Woe to me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Indeed, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear. And the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall be that he who flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, shall be caught in the snare, for the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth are shaken. The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall totter like a hut. 
its transgression shall be heavy upon it, and it will fall and not rise again. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the hosts of exalted ones, and on the earth the kings of the earth. They will be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and will be shut up in the prison. After many days, they will be punished. Then the moon will be disgraced and the sun ashamed. For the Lord of hosts will reign on Mount Zion and in Yerushalayim and before his elders gloriously. So we are in the throes of pain like a lady in labor pushing that child down that it might have life and life will come when Yeshua HaMashiach comes back, y'all, right? The old will pass away, and behold, all things will become new. All right, we move right along <clears throat> to Galatians chapter 2. We have begun it, so we will pick up with verse 17. Galatians 2, 17. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Chapter 3 of Galatians. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> Paul is giving it to him. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Let me get this page here. 
<clears throat> wow. Wow. I mean, there's no doubt when you get done reading that, it all has to come by faith. It has to come by faith. The old man has died. And now we are walking by faith in Christ. All right, we move right along to Psalm 60. And the uh, history behind these words is when he fought, David fought against Mesopotamia and Syria of Zobah. And then Joab returned and killed 12,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. Good morning, Miss Catherine. Blessings to you. And here are the words, the precious words given to the musician and set to the tune called Lily of the Testimony. Lily of the Testimony. Oh God, you have cast us off. You have broken us down. You have been displeased. Oh, restore us again. You have made the earth tremble. You have broken it. Heal its breaches, for it is shaking. Wow, David was feeling the same thing then we are feeling now. Shaking. Somebody is shaking this whole earth. Heal its breaches, for it is shaking. You have shown your people hard things. You have made us drink the wine of confusion. You have given a banner to those who fear you that it may be displayed because of the truth. Selah. Stop and listen to that. That your beloved may be delivered. Save with your right hand and hear me. God has spoken in his holiness I will rejoice, I will divide Shechem, and measure out the valley of Sukkot. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the helmet for my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom I will cast my shoe. Philistia. Shout in triumph because of me. Who will bring me to the strong city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O oh God, who cast us off? And you, O oh God, who did not go out with our armies, give us help from trouble. For the help of man is useless. Through God, we will, do, we will do valiantly. For it is he who shall tread down our enemies. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, does that psalm not speak like it was written today? I'm amazed. I'm amazed at God's word. Good morning, Miss Donna. Blessings to you, sweet sister. <clears throat> All right, we wrap up today with Proverbs 23, verses 15 and 16. Proverbs 23, verses 15 and 16. My son, if your heart is wise, my heart will rejoice. Indeed, I myself. Yes, my inmost being will rejoice when your lips speak right things. Oh, what an encouragement to all you sons of the living God. If your heart is wise, others, my heart, it says, will rejoice. Yes, my inmost being will rejoice when your lips speak right things. Oh, we need a whole army of powerful men led by the Holy Spirit speaking truth. And here's how we get it, right? 
right here. Oh, precious Lord, we feel drawn unto you today. Oh, we feel, we feel your presence. We, we enjoy your word. Your word is jumping off the page at each and every one of us. Your word speaks today. It speaks every day. This is the living word of God. This is the only book we will ever open that has eternal life living off of each page. Jesus spoken of and blessed and praised on every page. Thank you, Jesus. Every situation, every name, every event has you in it, Lord Jesus. And so we come before you, Lord, this group of believers and those who perhaps are seeking you and maybe some newborn believers. Father God, you know, we don't know. We don't even know where all you take this. We'll find out in heaven one day. It's really not important. What's important is that we're here. And then you, Lord, you use us, you take us wherever you want to. You take this word of yours spoken and let it be carried everywhere that it could go. Let ears that are opened up, Lord, hear your word. Let eyes truly see your word spiritually and see what's happening and why they are here at this present time. Your timing, Lord, is perfect. Lord, you have asked us to pray for peace for Yerushalayim. Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. And we pray for her peace, your peace, the peace that comes down from the third heaven, the peace that passes all understanding. Nobody can even understand how suddenly there's peace in the middle of a storm. Thank you, Lord. Let your peace, please, go everywhere in Yerushalayim, everywhere. Let it go inside every home as they are still shut down. But Lord, just when they were getting very, very disappointed and upset that they might not be able to celebrate Feast of Tabernacles, the days of all, the Day of Atonement, these fall feasts that you set in place, Lord. Then comes the news of the peace signed right there at our White House yesterday. And they were jubilant. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for encouraging their hearts. Thank you, Lord Jesus. They are just looking for any little encouragement. Father God, we'd ask that those heads of the other countries, when they left to go home, that they were blessed by you, by you, that they felt peace, they felt touched, they knew that something had happened that was beyond them. Oh, Father, we'd ask that you would use it to your glory for whatever season that you have brought it to pass. Let it be there, Lord, for the people of those countries and the people of Israel and the people of America and the rest of the world. Father God, let many be able to rejoice that have longed and prayed for such an occasion, 
such a day to come. We bless you for it, Lord. Protect every single one of them for the pickings of the devil who's not happy about it at all. Lord, we'd ask that you would restrain all of the interference that other, other countries might take a look and say, well, let's join in. Let's see what we can do here. We know, Lord, <clears throat> that President Trump and his mighty administration, who's been working on this a long time, will continue to work, inviting other nations. <clears throat> Precious Jesus, we are seeing all these prophecies coming to pass. And none of it would be worth anything without the fact that you came and you willingly died on that cross for us. And that made all of it, all of it important. Every word of this word, important. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your precious words crying, it is finished. We humble ourselves this morning, Lord, before you. We come with a repentant spirit. We come, Lord, crying out to you. Crying out to you. You know it all. And you have a plan for everything. You're the only one who knows it all. And so, Lord, we hold up Benjamin Netanyahu and his precious wife, Sarah, and their family, and the Knesset, and the administration in Israel. And we'd ask, Lord, that you have your perfect will, your perfect way. Let your people find out that they do not need to despair, that they can be encouraged, that you are loving them, that it is your hand, your right hand that is upon them, and you have them home right now for many reasons, like everyone else, that we might seek you, Lord that we might just cut down all of the foolishness running around, all of the idols of sports and money and drink and carousing and the fornications that were mentioned. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Holy Spirit, we call on you to go out all over this earth at the beckoning call of the Father and draw people, Lord. Holy Spirit, draw people unto the Lord God Most High, the living God, the God of Avraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Draw them unto this great and mighty salvation that our precious Lord Jesus has purchased with his own blood. With your own blood, Lord. Your blood, potent today as the day you shed it. Lord, I hold up America to you. Lord, I'd ask that you would relieve the burdens and the stress <clears throat> from President Trump. Keep knocking on his heart, Lord, that he hears your voice, that he casts all the care upon you, that he looks to you for the way that you want him to go, for the way of having things done your way, not man's way, not President Trump's way, but Lord, cause him to see the greater plan your way. 
cause him to be led by Ruach HaKodesh every moment. Bless and protect, please, Lord, his precious family. Wonderful Vice President Mike Penson, Karen, and his family. Melania, Young Baron, and all of the Trump family. And all of the administration, Lord. Each and every one working very hard towards righteousness. Cause them to withstand and withhold the badgering of the enemies within our nation. And Lord, we are believing and we are praying for Attorney General Barr and Mr. Durham. Precious God, reveal to them, speak unto them, and cause them to move at your timing. Cause them, Lord, to bring forth truth, and that when truth is revealed, your justice will prevail. Your right hand will move. Lord, as we come before you repentant of America's sins. Lord, I thank you for the coming and approaching day of September 26th. For many, I believe, I'm believing for two million, Lord, more than have ever come to D.C. for any event. Come. However, they can even if they have to just sit in their cars on the edges of the city, let it be known they're there. And let those with their hearts bowed down, their knees on the grass of the mall, bring forth, Lord, the repentance of our sins and the repentance of the sins of this nation, that we might see you bring your great, promises and glory, your great plans out of this present shaking, that you might deal with those that have revealed themselves as haters, as destroyers of life and property and stealing and looting and just going off on a tangent from hell. Lord, we'd ask that you would have your will and your way. And help us, Lord, to walk a straight path, to hear your voice, not to fall off to the left or the right, but Lord, speak to us that we know that we know that we know what you are saying, what we should do, what we should not do, how long we should wait on issues, wait on people, wait on prayers to be answered. Cause us, Lord, cause us to be faithful like Abraham that we read about. You spoke to him, and then you caused him to walk out by faith. And his family, they all thought he was crazy. His father was head of all the evil worship. Lord, you called him, and he obeyed. Lord, help us to know when and how and what we are called and cause us to obey. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our dear Savior, who is interceding for us, alive and well at the right-hand side of his Father. Bless you, Lord, for giving us another day and all God's people. Cry a hearty amen and went ahead and lived this day to the full, rejoicing, praising him. Yes, one body, one spirit, one faith, one Lord one people, one nation, praising the Lord.